I know you guys have been really pressed about seeing some after results of some people with the results, you know, after they did the henna hair coloring and how their gray was covered. And you wanna see like, what was the results and how did their hair come out at the end? So I got this video for you with Curly Proverbs. Yes, AK Farida. So your girl did a henna hair color collab with Henna Sook. And I have all the great content that she provided in this hair regimen plan for coloring your hair the easiest way possible to get you gorgeous, beautiful hair just like she did. Before I get started, welcome to my channel. My name is Khadija. I am the CEO and founder of Henna Sook. I specialize in natural henna hair dyeing and Ayurvedic healthy hair care and gorgeous, beautiful, and the dopest henna and jago body art. So what I love about working with Farida AK, your girl Curly Proverbs, was that we really dive deep in this whole henna hair color method, not only to get gorgeous hair, but we also went through tips on using the right ingredients and why, and just like really heavy details on how you can get the best color results. And yes, cover grays naturally without having to use chemicals. So when Farida is describing her hair, she finds it to be really more so like a combination of different types. Type 3A, mostly in the back, and then type 3C in the front. And you may notice that with your own hair, you have different curl patterns and different areas of your hair, even if your hair is straight and wavy, and you've got like different you know parts and sections to your hair, and it can be as diverse as you are. So if you have a similar hair type and you can relate, this is gonna be perfect for you. Hey beautiful, my name is Farida, founder of Curly Proverbs. I am a content creator on YouTube and I have been creating content focusing on Ayurvedic hair care for nearly eight years now. I'm super proud to be collaborating with Henna Soup to bring you a course focusing on coloring hair using Ayurveda. So my um, journey with Ayurveda actually started about eight years ago now and I was in search of something. I was so desperate to grow my hair out. I was so frustrated, tired of brushing my hair and seeing broken strands all over my sink, all over my floor, um, not being able to retain length. I used deep conditioners, but I still was not able to grow my hair out. And I was starting to fall into the trap of believing that my hair type could never retain length beyond collarbone length because that was all I had known my whole life. Like 20 years had gone by and my hair was still here. Graduated, hair still here. Got married, hair still here. And so enter Ayurveda, the love of my hair life. So let's talk through some of the key components that you'll be using. Right, the first thing is, of course, henna, my original bay, my ride or die. Absolutely fantastic for giving strength and shine and rebuilding the hair. And then amla, we're gonna be utilizing amla as a part of the mixture because it helps to maintain the integrity of the curl pattern. Um, and we're also gonna be using amla in an oil form at the end just to maintain moisture and um, keep the hair hydrated. Then we've got indigo, of course, which is going to be adding the black or the dark component to our hair coloring once we have done the henna. And then we've got aloe vera, which just adds a bit of moisture because that is the one thing that is a downside to henna is that it can be drying and aloe vera just balances that out. And of course, essential oils. Essential oils bring their own addition to the game. They're antiseptic, uh, specifically love using um, sweet orange. Um, it is anti-inflammatory. It is great for the scalp. It smells amazing. Although orange is not everyone's cup of tea. The other oil I could recommend is using rosemary, which is incredibly stimulating for growth and has a wonderful smell to it as well. So let's go straight to mixing. Okay, so now we are going to do some mixing. This is my favorite part. Remember, super warm or hot water, ideally distilled. And you need to do this three to four hours as a minimum before you apply. This allows time for the Lawson diet to release and there will be like a change in the color of the henna and you will get the maximum color and benefit if you do it this way. 
So let's get to mixing. Okay, so first we're gonna go in with our henna. Here we go. I'm just gonna put that into the bowl. First, I'm actually going to need 300 grams of henna. And for each 100, I'm going to put in a tablespoon of amla and a teaspoon of aloe or thereabouts, okay? One or two tablespoons or teaspoons, depending. The other thing to be aware of is obviously the indigo and henna, they do actually stain, that is the whole point, they are dyes. So when you start manipulating or using it and, and it's already had liquid added to it, you want to definitely make sure you are wearing gloves, girl, or that manicure or your nail bed will change color. There are some cultures where um, of course, I think everyone knows about the henna that is applied to the hands for special occasions, such as weddings or Eid celebrations. Um, but we also have cultures where they apply henna to the nails and color the nails, sort of as um, a nail color or polish. So I've got my 300 grams of henna. And to that I'm adding three teaspoons. make it six teaspoons of aloe. Four, five, six. Be very aware that because they're so finely milled, these powders, um, you wanna try not to inhale it because it can make you really sneezy. Um, it vaporizes upwards. And then you wanna add tablespoons of amla, so we're going for, again, six tablespoons of them. To help with the distribution of the powders, I tend to give it a good mix while it's dry. Very gently, again, we really don't wanna kick up the, um, the powders all too much, but I do like to just take the opportunity when it's dry just to mix up the powder. Now we're gonna add some hot water to maximize the dye release. And once we've done that, I'm gonna go in with the essential oils um, when it's just a little bit cooler um, and coming down to room temperature or just warm uh, because I want to maintain the integrity of the properties of the essential oils because they really do bring more than just a scent to the party as we've mentioned before. Um, they're wonderful for the scalp, they're wonderful for stimulating hair growth. So we want to keep those properties intact and they can be quite delicate and easily lost in some essential oils. Okay, so I've got my hot water. We are going to add that really slowly and mix it up to a cake batter like consistency. You want it to be creamy, you want it to be thick. So let's go ahead and do that. Look at that, it's just gorgeous. Pour them. So we're going to keep adding water to the bigger batch until it's as smooth as the small one I just demoed with. And we're going to leave it to sit for three to four hours. I'm a busy mom, so I'm gonna to get to doing the stuff I need to do and then come back to it. You can, of course, use different essential oils of your choice. Um, there's a range of amazing um, hair benefits of different oils, such as, for example, uh, you could use lavender. Lavender is wonderful for um, hair growth as well, for reversing even things like alopecia. There are many, many studies that have shown the benefits of lavender for reversing alopecia in mice, in women, uh, with um, female pattern balding, um, hormonal, um, hair loss as well um, or something like jasmine as well it's very very fragrant and very conditioning for the hair um, wonderful addition to any of your oils or your ayurvedic mixes um, and the same is true for aloe vera it is a wonderful addition to any uh, ayurvedic mix that you're going to put together Okay, so now that the heat of the hot water has come down to about room temperature, I'm gonna go in with my essential oils, about 10 drops of essential oil. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and do that. Okay. 
The other thing I wanted to say was, if you accidentally, it's actually better to mix more than less, because if you accidentally mix just a little bit more, you can always freeze the excess and come back to it in six weeks when you need to reapply, or um, in a month's time, six weeks, when you need to reapply um, to your root. Or you can always go in, you can freeze it in like an ice cube tray, break up a piece or two, and put it into your deep conditioner in the weeks in between. So it's actually better to mix up more than less. Um, and you need to really pay attention when you're applying it to apply it to the scalp um, to make sure that you don't miss anything. Your scalp should feel really cool, then you know that you've done it correctly. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to prep the hair. We really want the henna to bind onto the hair shaft and in order for it to do so and not end up being deterred by oils, we need to ensure that the hair is thoroughly cleansed. I'm gonna actually be using the soap nut shampoo, which I'm gonna grab and show you now. So this is the soap nut hair wash by henna souk. It's got dead sea salt in it um, and it is SLS free and color safe. Great for cleansing the hair and slightly exfoliating as well. And it adds shine, it's antibacterial, all that good stuff for healthy scalp and clean strands as well. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and wash it out. My hair loves this because it's got aloe vera and my hair just absolutely loves that ingredient. So let's go wash that and I'll come back and show you the application process. Okay hey guys, so we have cleansed the hair, it's feeling super clean, smelling really, really minty. So we have here the Henna Care Balm, it smells so good. And you really want to warm it up with your fingers and you want to apply it to the edges of your hair all the way around to the nape of the neck. It contains cocoa butter, calendula wax, castor, olive oil, coconut, tangerine, and black pepper essential oils. And um, you know, most of the ingredients in there are actually organic. So it's really amazing stuff. Take that all the way. Don't be shy, ladies. You really wanna. And gents, let's not discriminate, because I know gents be looking after themselves these days really well. Um, so yeah, I'm just going in. I don't know if you can, see up close with that really going in and making a barrier because you don't essentially want this to stain and give you an orange <laughs> orange face because that is essentially what will happen if you have very stubborn greys one of the things you can do is actually mix indigo into the initial um henna application and then use it in the second part as well and um, the other thing that you can do is make sure you use heat it intensifies the amount of color that's released so now i'm gonna have to leave this on for three to four hours but if i was to use heat i could cut that down to two hours for sure um and you also want to make sure that the edges don't dry out so you're definitely going to want to go in with cling film and the other thing you're going to need to use both for when you're applying the indigo and the henna is you are gonna need some gloves. Listen, this dye is in high release mode. We've used hot water. It's a whole mask. So let's just take the front section of hair. Okay, so if you wish to, you can actually use an applicator bottle to really go in at the roots. I am going to divide up this section. So I'm just gonna go in. Ladies, from the roots, you should feel the cooling sensation on your scalp. Really get in and massage it. It's the most neglected area where we don't tend to apply. Go in front. Really, you want to feel the cooling effect on your scalp. More the essential oils and herbs. And then you just really want to make sure that you don't miss a spot. See, it's all being evenly coated. Really take your time. By the way, you want to make sure that you put the balm over your ears also. Look at the length, guys, that the henna has helped me to attain. It's not even fitting on the shot. Let's try it. And, and that's just the front. The back is really, oh, I love this process. And this is why you need more than you think you need because of all the double coating of the hair. 
My hair feels amazing right now, honestly. I can feel the strength going in already. I do like to apply to damp hair. I just find that it helps with the distribution. Freshly cleansed damp hair for me is ideal. Not dripping wet because then the product will just drip off. Whew. Can you see me? <laughs> I'm just gonna cut to it all applied by the magic of technology. I think I have gone beyond the balm that I applied. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you a top tip. If the henna goes over the area that you don't want it to, buy a of soda and lemon juice and scrub as quickly as possible. But I'm just going to, I'm just reveling in this right now, to be honest. I'm going to swirl the hair around and we are going to put cling film. If you need to spritz down the edges of your hair to make sure it stays wet, do so. But the cling film or a plastic hat is going to really help to make sure that the color release continues. Okay, so we are good to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, this is lined with plastic on the inside as well. And leave that in for three, four hours. I'm gonna go rinse all of the mess, change my clothes, and I will see you with my results. We are post henna treatment. It's actually been a couple of days. Um, ideally, you want to either immediately follow with the henna treatment or do it up to three days after, just to ensure that the color is able to cling properly um, and also to ensure your roots don't start coming in and then you have to do your henna treatment again in order to do the indigo and it not be an unexpected color. Okay, so we have this as our result. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix up our indigo and we are going to apply that and hopefully we are going to have all of the copper brought down to darker tones to match um, the rest of the hair. Okay, so let's go ahead, mix our indigo concoction and let's apply it to our strands. Let's do it. Okay. So we are gonna to get to mixing now. The really important thing to remember is you only want to use hot water. Unlike henna, where you can use different liquids to mix in, in order for the dye release to be optimal and not be interfered with, you really just need it to be hot water because likely it might not work if you try mixing it with other different bits and pieces, okay? So you wanna get some hot water. And in this instance, I'm gonna be using 200 grams of indigo for my hair and just some hot water. Um, I've let the kettle cool down for a little, so let's get mixing. To me, it's a slightly greener hue, this indigo. First henna. Gorgeous. All you wanna do is slowly add the hot water, and mix. It smells so good. Look at that. Mm. It's to get with wanting it to not literally. Oh snap. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, dampen, detangle my hair, and get ready to apply this indigo. I cannot wait to see my results. Let's go. 
So I really like to uh, allow it to sit for about 15 minutes for the color to develop. You can actually see the difference in the color at the top as it's beginning to oxidize. Can you guys see that? Um, you can see underneath that that is the original tone. You can see at the top that the color is starting to develop into that dark sort of greeny blue. Um, and that's just gonna continue to darken while I go away um, and detangle and dampen my hair down ready for application. Look at that, so you can see the color developing and how this green will become black, blue black. It smells incredible. I'm gonna leave this to sit for maybe another five, 10 minutes I think, and then I'm gonna apply. Right guys, so I actually, when I say dampen, what I mean was wet because I wanted to thoroughly saturate my hair. So I'm going to go in with my microfiber cloth and just dry my hair a little because I want to make sure it's not soaking wet. You want it to be damp because you want the colour to attach. That's the sound of my gloves, sorry. And I've already torn my gloves in case anyone spots that. And the colour's developed really, really nicely in the indigo. You can really see a massive difference. It virtually looks blue-black, which is the colour you're going for. So you can see, you can see even with my hair wet, you can see the henna, the redness that's been caused by the henna. Can you see that? Can you see that? I'm just going to section each section. And work through. Right guys, so let's do it. Let's do this. Oh, it still feels warm. And you are just simply coating the strands. You got almost missed out a very important step. Bomb. All the way around. Get those ears, girl. You know you want to get that earring off. The back of the neck. Okay, so we are bombed up. Right guys, so you can see that lovely dark color coming through. It still feels warm, which is really nice. Mm. Right guys, so I'm just gonna, ooh, child, listen. It's really important that you do cover all of it though because you don't want it to dry out. There we go, we're getting there. Just persevering. My glove tore, so hence the my fingers were getting covered with the indigo anyway. Right, so I've just gone ahead and washed the excess indigo off my face, but I will say that it's liable to keep trying to leak. Um, and one of the things that I find helps me is just tucking some cotton and every now and then it will get saturated and you'll get rid of it but it should prevent most if not all of the leaking and I will literally do this all the way around but yeah so here I am for like probably three hours Okay, so these are my results. Super, super proud of them. Teeny weeny confession to make though. My glove was broken and I thought I was a G. I was like, how much color could really end up in your hands in the 15 minutes it takes for you to color your hair? Well, let me just cut to the clip. I won't even explain. Don't think you're a G and miss out on gloves. Top tip would be, please, for the love of all that is good, if you're doing a one-step process, take three pairs of gloves in case it breaks, in case you need to stop, do something else and it's really difficult to reapply your gloves. 
make sure you have some spares. My second confession is that my greys are very stubborn. I have low porosity hair. So if you find that in your first application it's a fail, my hair stayed bright orange and the rest of the hair was black, okay? Um, what we ended up having to do was reapply a second time. And I have got a few hacks that you might find helpful, um, some sneaky tricks to help the color get in. First off, when you do the first treatment, make sure it's a 50-50 split between your henna and your indigo. Um, this ensures that your hair is a brown overall as opposed to you having the brighter copper colors. Um, and it's much easier to transition into the black and for the indigo to attach with a second application. The second thing you want to do is you want to apply heat and leave it on for as long as possible. Add a couple of hours onto the waiting time so that it really gets a chance to go in. Now it could be that you sit for half an hour at the beginning just really allowing that heat to go in. The other thing that I do is I use hot water, not boiling water mind you, both for the henna and the indigo because you don't want to ruin the color release, uh, you don't want to ruin the dye at all. Hot distilled water is ideal for allowing the release of the dye. You've rinsed it out, don't follow up with a moisturizing deep conditioner. The reason being it does not allow the color release to happen fully and actually ends up uh, removing some of the color deposit. So you really want to just go in with a leave-in conditioner um, and just leave it at that. If you must apply something in addition, then I would say use something like the amla oil that henna suit carry. Again, it is supporting the, the properties of the amla that you had in the initial treatment as well. So I would definitely say if you must use amla oil. Okay, so I hope you found this to be a useful resource. Remember, you can actually utilize herbs to naturally color your hair, change your hair color, manipulate it, have some fun with it, um, all without having any damage to your hair. There is such a journey of learning in this. It is so fun and it's really lovely to kind of put aside a bit of time just to take care of you. Um, and it really is a lovely ritual to get into for yourself and clients if you are a stylist. So do let us know your feedback on the course. We hope that you found it helpful and we'll see you in the next one. So what did you think? Did you love exactly how her hair came out? I mean, I did. Her hair is phenomenal. It colored really well. It was fun and it was easy. It wasn't as difficult as maybe you might've thought it could have been. She made it so easy, so seamless. So guess what? You know what? With this hair regimen plan with Curly Proverbs, now you can get all the bundle of products, like everything that she used, you can use too. And you're gonna get access to the full hair care regimen as an added bonus. It's all included. That means extra support because not only does the hair regimen give you access to you know, the basics of the content that was all created, all the recipes and all that, but you get direct access to me to ask any questions that you may have during this whole journey, which only the hair regimen plans that I offer have this included in it. So definitely you wanna take advantage, you wanna get that bundle and you will automatically get access to the whole hair regimen plan on coloring your hair naturally with henna and indigo. And I wanna know in the comments below, what has been some of your most pressing issues when it comes to henna, hair dyeing, or what has stopped you from just jumping into coloring your hair naturally? What are some of the fears that come up? And don't forget, you gotta subscribe and you gotta hit that bell so that way you don't miss any notifications of all the great videos that we have coming out because we have new series. We are working on a few new things and you do not wanna miss out. So all you have to do is stay tuned for the Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday videos that we have coming for you every single week. And I will see you next time, guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye.